the new kids on the block have bestowed upon us a brand new printer. Thanks to Bamboo Lab for sponsoring today's video and sending us their brand new P1P. This one is a new version, a stripped down version of their X1 and X1 Carbon at over half the price of their X1 Carbon. Let's see if they cut the corners in the right places. Compared to the X1 Carbon and the X1, this has no side panels. It really is a skeletonized version. It looks exactly like the X1 Carbon sort of on the inside, almost. All of this is exactly the same. It uses the exact same motion platform as their, you know, top of the line models. So that's kind of where most of the cost is. And then they basically just got rid of all the extra stuff that you don't really need. So we have a entire spool of Bamboo Labs basic filament. This will be the screen. So I don't believe this is a touch screen. It's kind of just a little guy like this with a chromatic kind of boring thing. We'll get that installed in a minute. The kind of design methodology of this one is uh, more like, oh, you can customize it, make it your own. So if you want to upgrade it down the line or use the printer itself to print new panels, those are all available as, as generic items online. You can buy these accessories for the P1P if you so want. We have a nozzle cleaning needle, very small. We have a little Allen key for some of the bolts that we're going to be removing in a minute. I believe this is going to be the main Allen key that we'll be using for all of the shipping bolts at the bottom there. I guess some extra little screws for the uh, hot end assembly. We also have a couple replacement parts for the nozzle wiping system. These are kind of interesting because this printer has an entire system of pre-checks before you start printing. So it makes it incredibly easy to just kind of push go and everything's all right, including a filament cutter system and everything like that. And then we have the hot end itself. They give you an entire new hot end as a spare which is really quite nice. You may have noticed that the hot end is not like anything else on the market, and it is completely proprietary. That kind of raises my hackles a little bit. It's nice that they've included another one, but you can buy replacement hot ends from Bamboo for the absolutely horrendous price of $15. So if it's gonna be proprietary, I'm glad it's kind of that price. It's really quite nice to see. Bamboo is saying that it'll take 15 minutes from unboxing to first print, and Pretty much the whole printer comes fully assembled. We do have to remove a couple screws that hold the bed down for shipping. And then we also have to put on the screen. Take the screen and you plug the cable into the screen. So that tucks in there and then it just snaps over and the screen's on. I've got the all metal filament spool holder attached. We can see our belts directly. It apparently has an automatic belt tensioning system. I have no idea how that works. I've never seen it in action. I assume it just does it automatically in the background. And something that we don't often see on 3D printers is it's got a butt. It has a little poop chute. When we get it started up, I'll show you, but it, it primes and poops it out the back. There we go. So we can actually look inside the hot end assembly. It's just held on with magnets. And yeah, we just gotta get this PTFE tube in here. We'll press that in, make sure it's locked in nice and tight. There we go. And that's pretty much that. Okay, uh, first power on. This is always exciting. Oh, that's what our first bit of hurdle and a bit of gripe with bamboo. We need an app. Now, I understand that that's sometimes kind of okay. Um, I think in this instance it is. I like that they've included a skip this portion. So you really just have to use it once. We have an account and what we're gonna do is we'll just scan the barcode and then have it bound to our account. We're gonna do our first time setup now. We can see in the app here, it's asked me again if I remove those bolts. If you do forget, it doesn't destroy itself. It just makes horrible, horrible noises. So don't forget that. And it's asking me to start the procedure. I'm gonna hit start. Oh yeah, another thing I really like about these is the Z gantry moves really quickly. This is its homing procedure and then it'll go to the middle the bed will vibrate, which is kind of interesting. It has a vibration dampening compensation system. There's a sensor in the hot end or somewhere in the printer that measures the vibration coming from a machine itself and can adjust the motion paths to kind of cancel that out or at least make it a little bit more minimal. The bed kind of vibrates just to make sure that there's nothing in the way. If I like put my hand on it, it'll basically throw an error and be like, oh, the bed's hit something and I'm not supposed to have hit something yet. There's no homing switch on this. The homing is done completely through the nozzle and hot end assembly, which is amazing. It means that you're always gonna have perfectly level prints that don't need any fine tuning to get that first layer right because it knows that the nozzle is at zero rather than it being an offset from your end stop 
compared to the bed compared to the nozzle. Now we've started our vibration compensation. So it's going to sweep through different levels of intensities of, of vibratoriness and um, measure them compared to the resonance that it's feeling in the case itself. You can hear the tone rising. Here we go. If the printer is ever moving at those frequencies while it's printing, your whole table's gonna be shaking. By having the vibration compensation system, you can make the printer move in not those spaces, or if it has to move through that frequency range, it'll slow down or speed up to avoid that little hole of extreme violence. So it's gone back to its park position. Hey, this, it's got a smiley face. So on our home screen here, we have, you know, we have bed temperature, hot end temperature, kind of print time remaining the status of the printer, which is fine. It's got all the stuff you need. The second page here is kind of your transport controls. We can home the printer. We can move the Z-axis up and down. And we also have our, our fan speeds and all that sort of thing as well. We also have SD card support. So you can print from a micro SD card, but what I've been doing and what I like doing is using the Bamboo Studio app, which we'll have a look in a minute to um, send the printer the files through their cloud service, which is problematic, but you can set it to land mode. One of the things that makes the bamboo printers so impressive is the motion system. And the P1P gets the same one as the X1 and the X1 Carbon. The entire hot end assembly here is a core XY system and uses two motors at the back with a pair of belts to move it in very precise little dance of uh, adjustment. The X-axis gantry is made of two carbon fiber rods with the belts sandwiched between. And that allows the weight to be really, really low because the printer has to move this entire assembly back and forward at like ridiculous speeds. This is our hot end assembly right here. And this is our direct drive extruder. We also have an interesting feature, this filament cutter, which it'll automatically slice off the filament if you're doing changes or anything like that to kind of keep the, the whole path really pure and make sure that there's not like extra colors and things in there. We also have a filament runout sensor, which is super nice. You can take this whole thing apart yourself. It doesn't have any special screws. It's just this Allen key and this Allen key. All the bolts in the entire machine are pretty much just these two, which is, which is great. Here's the spool of PLA Basic. There's a little tag right there. And Bamboos does something interesting. They put an RFID tag on the spool itself. When you're using the AMS, it'll automatically read that tag and feed the printer the type of plastic it is, its settings, its color, and how much you have remaining in the spool. Unfortunately, this is a bamboo proprietary type of tag, and I'm really hoping that they'll eventually open that up for anybody else to use, but it's only available on their filament right now. Now let's just get this plugged in and we'll start a print, and I can show you how fast this thing goes. Bamboo Studio is actually a fork of Prusa Slicer. All open source, you can find the entire unbuilt code on Bamboo's GitHub, which is super nice to see. For how proprietary Bamboo has kind of made this ecosystem, there's actually a lot of stuff that's really open about it. All the slicer and pretty much all the settings for the printer themselves, you can modify. I would find that this printer would drive me insane if I couldn't modify some of the, the checks. Thankfully, Bamboo has included a bunch of different startup scripts which just exist as start and end G code. Um, so you can modify them to however you want. Um, I have a couple custom ones in here that I found online. People have already started writing uh, fast startup scripts, which get that seven minutes down to about 30 seconds without any loss. Like you maybe need to do a full startup script once in a while, but it saves all the settings in firmware. Yeah, it seems to run a modified version of Marlin as well. So you can send this printer just to G-code. You don't have to use Bamboo Studio. You just load your G-code onto the micro SD card and it'll print right from that just fine. So I'm gonna use the pre-done preset here for the startup, which is gonna be the P1P with the default 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Um, if we look at the advanced section here, we can see all the bed details. We can see the printable height, 250 millimeters on this. Um, we have the uh, G-code flavor, which is Marlin Legacy. That's how we know it's Marlin. And we can also see the filament load time and unload time. So that's an adjustment setting to if you wanted it to pull back the filament, how much to pull it back for, that sort of thing. We have access to all of our machine G-codes here, just like you know from Pusha Slicer. And then we have our motion ability, which is crazy. The maximum speed of the X and Y carriage is 500 millimeters a second. Now you're not gonna be printing at that speed, but that's gonna be your travel speeds. And for you Americans, that's gonna be 20 inches per second. You know, it's, it's quick, it's scary, you'll see that. When you kind of get into printers 
this capable, yeah. you kind of stop worrying about the movement capabilities of the printers, and you start having to worry about how much plastic you can extrude. Let's just do a goddamn print. How about that? So we'll just do the 0 0.16 uh, optimal, and we hit slice. It'll give us our time. This will take 19 minutes with the with the full print. We'll go print plate. It says 19 minutes. It's going to use five and a half grams of filament. We select our printer here, and I would like to do bed leveling. And uh, cannot send the print job to a printer whose firmware is required to be updated. Okay, we'll be back in a minute. I found another box in the box. We did our firmware update. It didn't take very long, which is kind of nice. What's this? So this printer is in pre-release right now. So when you buy the pre-release one, you get some extra goodies. So you get that light. You get the uh, you get the camera, and you get the layer fan, which is which is sick. Look at this thing. He's a beefy boy. Let's install this. I think it's pretty simple. It just kind of clips on. It's just got a ribbon cable here with some sticky tape. If you've got a micro SD card in there, you can record video in 720 or 1080, and it'll also do time lapses. Um, and there's special time lapse G code that it'll inject. So when it does a layer, it'll move the hot end out of the way, take a picture, so your print kind of comes out of nowhere and there's no hot end jumping around on top, which is kind of cool. In. There. While we're waiting for the bed to heat up and everything to get warm, let's talk about the build plate. So it's got these magnetic sheets, and it looks like they've included my favorite plate, which is the textured PEI one. You don't have to use any like glue or stuff on it, and it's kind of good for other things. The problem is that it leaves a bit of a rough surface, which you might not want. Um, they're magnetic, they are double-sided, which is really nice, and they offer two or three different styles of, of bed. The magnets are really strong, uh, which can be a bit of a problem as the detents at the rear are like maybe a little bit too small, but that's a problem on all the printers. The other thing that this printer is missing is the LiDAR. So Bamboo have included a feature that I've never really seen on any other printer, which is a small laser radar gun machine that sticks out the side of the hot end assembly. And what it'll do is it'll draw a little pattern on the front edge of the bed. Basically, it's an extrusion compensation system because when the print head is moving really fast, the plastic is leaving the nozzle, but it's maybe not leaving it evenly. And so you kind of get thinner lines, and then as you slow down to make a corner, the lines get thicker as the plastic that it's pushed through is kind of maybe overcompensating. And so what this does is it kind of moves in a jerky motion, and the line kind of waves around like this. And then it'll measure that and then calibrate itself immediately for that. So we're gonna do our initial home. It's gonna find the base level of where the bed is compared to the nozzle. It's gonna wipe the tip again. And now it's gonna just really make sure the tip is wiped. Um, and it's adjusting the temperature up and down consistently. So now we're doing our, our like final bed level. Um, it's gotta it's got wiggle. This printer likes to wiggle a lot. The textured PEI bed has a slight adjustment for the base layer because there's maybe a slight undulation in the surface it touches, so the start script will automatically compensate for that. And depending on what bed you're using, you don't have to worry about that compensation. It'll all be handled manually in the start G-code, which is really nice. We're 25% through this print, and it's still just setting up. We can fix this with the custom scripts, which skips all of this. It makes everything fast. It'll wipe the tip once, and it goes and then you're done. Like, come on, it's, it's half the print time is just the setup. I mean, I like that. You know, you're new at printing. This bed leveling system that we're doing right here is one of the hardest things to learn. It does a quick vibration calibration system as it cuts off my finger. Now we get into the fun stuff. So this is now our full speed. I shouldn't, but I'm just gonna disable the part fan so I can still talk. Um, one of the fun things that Bamboo has included is your speed control. I wish they had included a more fine granular speed control, but this is standard mode. I'm gonna switch it to sport mode now. There we go. Now we're in sport mode. You can see those movements are like It's kind of crazy. And then Bamboo has also included, because of course they did, ludicrous mode, which we are now in now. The reason it's sounding crunchy like that is just because this model has a lot of um, uh, tessellations on it. It's not very smooth, so it can't do the arc calculations that it needs to. The best thing about having a printer that can print this quickly is you can iterate through prototypes way faster. With my bamboos, I can do maybe four to six prototypes in the time that it would take a competing printer of the same kind of price range. 
to print one. Just having that acceleration and that travel speed and that movement speed is so much more useful to getting prints done. Normally the trade-off is quality or speed, and you can have both with, um, with any of the bamboo printers, including this one. Yeah, I really like that they've included the same motion system. They're not quiet printers. The, um, the X1 and the X1 Carbon are a little quieter because they have the sides on it. Um, they come with tempered glass tops and fronts. Even without the fans on, the it's printing really fast, and so the whole motion system is gonna make a bunch of noise. So here's an example of the, the pressure advance calibration. So that's the fast start. Uh, that didn't take seven minutes, it took maybe one to two minutes. That's my medium level one with a, a proper bed level and calibration. Again, our, our first layer is gonna be nice and slow, and then it ramps up after that. I really like the like custom motion paths that they have in here. When it reaches the end of the line, it does a little twirl to kind of break off the uh, the end and, and make it a little bit more seamless. So I want to remind you that this is the default standard speed that it's moving at. We can get a breakdown in Bamboo Studio. So this is currently printing at 230 millimeters a second, which is uh, quite a lot, actually. I think they've done something strange with their filaments because when we get to this level of motion platform, the only thing limiting your printing speed becomes volumetric flow. And this one with the bamboo filament can push 21 millimeters cubed per second of filament, which is a meaningless number in my brain, but is basically the amount of volume that it can push through per second. I would really love to see bamboo put a bigger hot end or offer an extended hot end like the Volcano to really push that melt zone higher. Instead of having to get multiple printers to like work on prototypes that could take 14 hours or something like that, you can be iterating on a day instead of overnight. Say I wanted to check the fitment between the rings, it's a little gyro model thing. Um, it takes me 20 minutes to iterate instead of what would probably be about an hour or maybe three hours on a uh, on another printer that wasn't Core XY. I mean, even at 230 millimeters a second for this print, it's still conservative. Uh, we can we can push this higher. We can use the sport mode. We can use the ludicrous mode. Your print quality is going to suffer, but you're still able to get those prints out even faster. Because the limit of this printer is 500 millimeters a second, you have unlimited movement capabilities, and it's really just limited by the hot end on this machine, which is a bit of a shame. But shouldn't be too hard for them to release a super extended version. I mean, the bed levels with the tool itself, you're gonna lose some print height, but that would be amazing. I wanna go faster, speed! This has uh, Linus proofing, so if I pull out the power cord, it should restore itself, which is kind of nice. I'm not gonna do that because I don't wanna be here all day. Okay, and we're done. What it did is it moved to the back and then cuts the filament and then make sure that it's all kind of ready to go for next time. It's pooped out the back. This is its little purge thing. It uses about 150 millimeters of filament, which is kind of a lot. With the fast start that you can find online or write yourself, you can get that down to about five or 10. We have this magnetic bed and the part has immediately come off. This looks quite good. There we go, we have this little gyro spinner thing, which is kind of cool. It's printed completely without supports and everything's nice and separate. It's interesting, you can actually see the tessellation on the outside, which is from the model itself. If your model or STL is exported with a low resolution, you will actually have less triangles on the outside. And so the arc fitting that this machine will do isn't so great. It's interesting this printer will reproduce those artifacts in the model itself, which is really cool. Yeah, this feels great. And it only took about, I don't know, 10 minutes to print with that seven minutes of start time, which is always a bit disappointing. But it's about half the price of the competitor that everybody likes. It feels weird. It feels shilly to like a product this much, especially doing a sponsored review. And I don't know how I feel about that, but I think if we're trying to keep open and transparent. The list of positives is basically everything, and the list of negatives is stuff I think can be fixed in software. I don't have the level of engineering degrees required to properly describe all the little nuanced features that it has. I'm basically a more advanced hobbyist at this point, but I think this is a real game changer for the whole industry. Every other printer manufacturer should be scared of bamboo. If you're not copying this product and you're not making clones of this product and you're a 3D printer company and you're not bringing out a product like this, then you're, you're screwed, basically. It's incredible. Good job, guys. If you want a 3D printer, um, only buy this one. Uh, unless it's too expensive, then buy another one. Uh, but you'll have more headaches and spend more time than with the P1P. Thanks.